Good morning. This is Andrew Kuhn. I'm the pastor of the Shalbani United Methodist Church. And on what we would call a normal Sunday, at this time I would be welcoming everyone for gathering at either the Honeywell or the Shelby United Methodist Church so that we might gather in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. However, we're not gathering right now in as much as uh, we're in a new time. A time when we are staying at least six feet away from each other at all times so that we can handle this uh, coronavirus, this COVID-19 that is currently changing how we live. This uh, is not meant to replace worship because by its very nature worship is something that we come together to do together in person and so this is something I don't know exactly what to call it yet, but it's something. So, um, welcome to my office. This is where all of my writing gets done. And so I, I, I thought I'd share with you what I've been writing this week. Uh, a few, the, the readings that go along with it, share the, the sermon, basically, in a prayer together. And, and we'll see what we think of this. This is something that we can change each week if this is something that would be better recorded at the pulpit, if it's something that works well here, if it's something that needs to be shorter, longer, please let me know and we will work out what it looks like for us to be doing this together. There are going to be other options we'll consider as we go forward uh, in the weeks to come. We might be looking at doing a, a Wednesday evening Bible study uh, on online for those who have uh, laptops, or you can we'll be able to do it through uh, maybe phones as well. well. We'll have to have some learning to do about technology and what that will look like. Um, but otherwise, this is what we're going to be doing. On, on Sunday mornings, I'll send this video out, and a, a hard copy version uh, will has already been sent to everyone who's at home and doesn't have internet. And hard copies were dropped off at the nursing home so that uh, they we can still stay connected to the best of our ability. One brief uh, note of, of uh, practicality: uh, we are uh, going to continue to run the church. Mondays and Thursdays will be when the church office is open. If something comes up, you need something, please let us know. Please keep us updated on how you're doing. Uh, we are asking that people not come into the church office simply because uh, if you're sick, we need to not spread it. We need to make sure that uh, the church itself can continue to, to function. Especially right now, we have a food pantry here, and we're going to continue to run this food pantry. We'll put boxes out for people to pick up, and we'll do deliveries as needed. And so if, uh, if someone needs food, please, we, we need to know and we'll help. Also, uh, we may be uh, helping some other organizations in the community. I'm talking to the other food pantry, talking to Mr. Greenwell. I've been talking to the manager at CNR, Heather, about what uh, how we might help there. So I will ask that if you are not in an at-risk group, which I believe would mean under 60 and not uh, don't have diabetes, no uh, immuno, immune system compromised, uh, etc. Uh, let me know and uh, if you'd be willing to give a hand when something comes up and, and maybe it comes up, maybe it doesn't, but please let me know. With that, uh, let's see what we can do here. I have uh, two readings for you today. The first is from Exodus, Exodus 14. This is a, the very beginning. This is when the Hebrew people are taking off, they have left Egypt, and, and they look back and they see that Pharaoh is pursuing them. And this is right before they, they cross the Sea of Reeds, or the Red Sea, as it is mistranslated. The, the word actually is Sea of Reeds there. But we read in Exodus 14 that the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled and the minds of Pharaoh and his officials were changed towards the people. And they said, what have we done letting Israel leave our service? So he had his chariot made ready and took his army with him. He took 600 picked chariots and all the other chariots of Egypt with them. And then skipping down a few verses. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? 
Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. And so we have this moment at the beginning of, of their trip, their, their journey, where there's an external pressure, right? Pharaoh is attacking. It's the very definition of external. They uh, look back and there are chariots chasing them. And then uh, Numbers 14, further down the road into their journey, there's this moment where, where they've sent the spies into the promised land and they come back and, and the 12 of them report and 10 of them say, you know what, uh, right? But listen to what happens. Um, they say that uh, it's a land of milk and honey, but there are people in there. And if we go in, they're going to whoop us. Right? And so the people respond in Numbers 14. All the congregation raised a loud cry and the people wept. And all the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron. The congregation said, Would that we had died in the land of Egypt. Why is the Lord bringing us into this land to fall by the sword? Would it not be better for us to go back to Egypt? Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before the assembly. And Joshua, son of Nun, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh, who were among those who had spied out the land, tore their clothes and said, The land we went through as spies is a good land. The Lord is pleased with us. He will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land that flows with milk and honey. Do, only do not rebel against the Lord. Do not fear the people of the Lord or the people of the land, for the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. If you imagine what it would have been like for the Hebrew people when they were enslaved, and Moses shows up, up out of the desert, and Moses says, we're going to go. We're out of here. Folks, let's, let's start getting ready. We're, we're, we're going. Right? God has promised us. You think people immediately started preparing? I, I don't, right? I don't think that they did. I think after the first plague, after the second plague, after the third plague, some of the people looked at Moses and said, ah, there's something going on here. Okay, let me start looking around. Do I have a backpack around here? Are, are, are the soles of my shoes in good shape, right? Do I need to put to make sure I have a, the, my cooking pot ready next to my backpack, ready to go, the small one that I can... I, would be okay carrying for a distance, right? I think there are some people after maybe plague two, three, four, who would have started preparing. And there are probably some people who uh, were thinking, you know what, that, that's, this could be something. I wonder if I have a backpack. And they start thinking about it. They don't do anything, but they just start thinking, well, maybe I, well, maybe I do have something here. And then there are the people who just, just don't believe, right? It, this is how it's been. This is how it's always going to be. I'm a slave. My dad was a slave. My grandpa was a slave. That's just how, how it is. And so that's what Moses has to deal with as he's trying to get these people ready to go. He's arguing with Pharaoh saying, let my people go. God says to you, let my people go. And he's trying to get the people ready so that when it's time to go, that they, they can go. Because that's when it happens, it's going to happen. And so the, the night of the Passover, the night of the 10th plague, the night in which the firstborn of Egypt uh, dies, it, it all happens. And the next morning, it's time to go. And the people who were ready to go, they, they, they have their backpack by the door, throw their backpack on, and they just, off we go, right? The, the people who were, had kind of known that this was going to happen or think it was going to happen had prepared, but at least they knew, oh, my backpack's over there. Let me go throw some stuff into it. And then I can imagine there were some people who woke up to this and was like, wow, this is really going to happen. I better throw some stuff in a blanket and tie it up. And making like a quick bundle so they can carry it over their shoulder is like their, their lives' processions in a little bundle that, that hopefully doesn't fall open as they walk. And, and so just imagining this great vast swath of people like marching off into the wilderness Marching off as a people for the first time, and uh, just like it'd be a grand sight to see, but like to zoom in and see it really up close and to see like some people have they're ready, they've got their backpack, and they're at the front of the, the crowd, they're they're marching off into a distance. They come on, Moses, here we go, like they're ready to go, right? And then the people in the back were like just trying to hold it all together because like they weren't ready, but it was time, and if they were gonna go. That was the time. If they were going to go, if they were going to be free, they had to go now, or not. And, and so they go on this journey, and, and the journey that 
that they have some are prepared for, some aren't, and, and they face some pressures, they face some challenges, they face both the external pressures, they face, you know, Pharaoh chasing them with the chariots, and you know, that's a challenge, right? They, Pharaoh, fer chariots behind them, and they have to deal with, with uh, trust that, that, that God will get them through, and they go through the Sea of Reeds, and in that moment, they, they have to deal with that. And um, the external pressure is like, they, they're going to go over a hill, and they're not, they don't know what's going to be on the other side of that hill. And then there's the internal pressures, right? It's not just the external threats, the external pressures, it's the internal pressures. They have their own doubts, their own confusion, their own lack of preparedness, their own just grappling with what's in front of them, inside, inside of themselves, like we all do, right? And so when the spies come back and say to them, it's a good land and we milk and honey flows and we just go into it. And, and, and the, the pressure that they have, the challenge they have to deal with is the internal one. Do I believe? Do I trust? Or do I let the fear get the better of me? And they, they do let the fe their fear get the better of them. And they do not go into the promised land. They go out into the wilderness for 40 years so that they can, in many ways, learn to conquer that fear, learn to have faith, learn to trust, learn to, to deal with not just the external challenges of how do we live in the wilderness, but the internal challenges as well. How do I become people? How do we become people that have trust and faith and confidence in, in who it is that we're following and in God's ways? And so uh, they have to grapple with this. And what keeps them going is the promise. I mean, the promise when, the, when the, the spies come back and say, we've entered this land of milk and honey, uh, that's not the first time that phrase has shown up. That phrase has shown up as promises to the people many times before. It shows up to Moses. When Moses stands before the burning bush, it's in Exodus 3, and Moses sees this bush and says, I must turn aside and look at this. What, uh, what God says is, I have heard the cry of my people, and I am going to free them. I am going to lead them. Uh, I know their sufferings. I am going to deliver them from Egypt, from the Egyptians. I will bring them out to a land a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey. This is the, the, the thing they're holding on to. They're going on to a land of milk and honey. And if they can just keep on keeping on, this is where they're headed. Like, I got to grapple with what's in front of me. I got to grapple with my internal fear. I got to grapple with external challenges, whatever's over the, over the horizon, right? But what I'm holding on to is we're going to the land of milk and honey. So let's do this, right? I chose this story, uh, this this part of scripture. I, I looking at uh, the journey to the promised land. I, I had chosen that long before uh, I'd heard the word COVID nineteen or coronavirus, and I had slotted this Sunday to be the Sunday looking at the challenges of of the journey, right? The the internal and the external challenges of the journey. I had slotted that in quite a while ago, and uh, thanks be to God, like this is. This is us, isn't it? Like, this is where we're at. We have just begun this journey that we, we're not prepared for. And, and there are these external pressures, and, and there are these internal pressures. But um, we are no more prepared for this, and no, no more could we have prepared for this than the Hebrew people being prepared for the journey they were going to take. Like, if you think about it, the Hebrew people were prepared for the challenges they were used to facing. They were prepared for the challenges of monotony. They were, they were great at coping with the challenge of day in, day out. They, they were dealing with the same thing day in, day out, day in, day out of, of slavery, of this hard labor. They were good at facing that challenge, but no matter how much they put in that bag and no matter how soon they packed that bag, they could not really prepare themselves to face a new type of challenge. Not, they didn't face a challenge of monotony anymore. They had to now face the challenge of, of, of uh, things changing on them day by day, not being able to know what's over the horizon and, and knowing that whatever it is, they had to deal with it. And, and so they could not have prepared. They can put the right stuff in the bag, but their challenges were uh, going to be hard. And, and in the same way, we, there is no way that we could have prepared for the challenges that we are facing right now due to this uh, coronavirus, this COVID-19. We are people that are used to a certain lifestyle 
and uh, a lifestyle of mobility, a lifestyle uh, of being able to get to things. And some of us prepared long ago, some of us prepared back when we first started hearing this out of, Ch out of China and started thinking, I should get some pasta and I should get some fixins and put them in my basement because you never know what's going to happen. And toilet paper, evidently that's, everyone's worried about running out of toilet paper. Um, maybe you prepared long ago, maybe you prepared two weeks ago because you thought, well, maybe this is, it looks like it's turning into something and you, you made a Walmart run and, and maybe... This is all coming up and sneaking up as a surprise, and man, it really did turn out to be true. And uh, like, no matter who you are, whether you were prepared long ago or whether you're preparing just like this week, there is nothing we can do to prepare for what we're facing now. What we're facing now is a different. We're having to live a different way of life than we're used to. In the same way, the slaves went from monotony to to travel. The Hebrew slaves went from being slaves to monotony to now traveling and we're, we're doing the opposite aren't we we've got we are going to uh, having to face a challenge of monotony and, and monotony is not something that can be conquered by having lots of toilet paper or, or lots of rice or beans beans evidently sold really well too um, so we have to face these challenges and they're new now some of those challenges are going to be external uh, can I get to the doctor? Can I get food when I need it? Can I take care of my loved ones? Will my loved ones get sick? And there's also the internal challenges, and I think those are actually the more the harder ones, facing the challenges of, of uh, boredom and worry and anxiety and depression, and especially for those those of us who already uh, tend towards some of these, tend towards depression and anxiety. Th these are going to be some hard days. I think it's worth uh, taking a moment to. Uh, Pay attention to what, what are some of the skills we need to practice in these days to handle ourselves. Because we, we can't handle what we think, in, in a sense, but, but we can handle what we do. And what we do sort of ends up shaping. Uh, what we do with our bodies ends up shaping where our mind is in some powerful ways. And so uh, what, what I'm learning, because uh, I'm, no, I'm no more prepared for this than anyone else, but what I'm learning is, is the power uh, of routine. I'm looking at uh, whatever that routine is going to be, if it's get up, get a shower, get going, or whether it's get up and take a shower after lunch, whatever that routine is going to be, uh, I think we're going to find routines are going to be essential for these coming days to break up our days. Like, I'm going to be productive in the morning and then chill in the afternoon and, and do some hobbies or, or whatever, play with the kids, go outside, take a bike ride. Like, that's, what I'll, I'll, that's my plan. Um, but just finding a routine... Uh, a way to break up our days, to, to continue to, to be healthy uh, in how we eat and how we move so that we don't, uh, and I'm struggling with that because I'm around the kitchen a lot more right now and I can make some tasty things and, and yeah, I'm, to eat healthy, that'll be a challenge I acknowledge for myself. To continue to pray for others, to work for others, to help others, just because we need to stay in our homes does not mean that we cannot help others, we can pray for others. We can be in contact with others. One of the most important things we can do for each other is to call, uh, to be in contact, to write letters, to Skype, whatever the method is, to be in contact. I I'm making a list of people I'm going to call on a regular basis throughout the uh, once a week just to keep up with people because we need that. We need that that interaction. And as I said, if, you, if you're healthy, um, in a, not in an at-risk group, there might be some ways that we, we as a church can help, so please let me know. Continue to be connected. Uh, also, it, it's interesting, be connected to people and disconnect from media. Because if you turn on the TV, and, and if I turn on the TV, if we turn on the TV and we watch it all the time, we are going to be really sucked into it. And, and this is a problem and a crisis, and it is slow-moving. This is not a fast-moving situation. If we watch the TV, watch the news, check in on uh, online once a day, that's probably good. What else? It's not like anything's going to change rapidly. Right? We're, we're just going to be chilling at home for quite a while. And finally, uh, taking this one day at a time. Long-term planning. I, I want to do long-term planning. The number of my long-term plans that just got derailed, it, I, I 
I cannot tell you how many plans I have that just got derailed. I'm still realizing all of my long-term plans that just got derailed. And to take it one day at a time is about what we can do. Just take it one day at a time. I'm reading through these suggestions on how to how to handle this these pressures, and, and I mean these are what I'm going to try. And, and please let me know what you try. Please let me know what works for you. At the end of the day, though. Uh, what got the Hebrew people through is what will get us through. And what got the Hebrew people through is having this distinct uh, commitment to that God's will is going to be done, that they are going to get to the land of milk and honey. They are on the journey. They know where the journey is going, and the journey is going to land in God's will being done. And, and that is our prayer for uh, that we pray as well. God, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And, and that is what I'm going to hold on to most, is that I'm praying that God's will be done on earth as as it is in heaven, and that I'm going to continue to follow Jesus uh, the best I know how, and that in prayer, in scripture, in service, in being faithful to Jesus, I'm headed towards the kingdom of God as we all are, as we are as a church, and that um, in the end, we don't know what's in front of us. As I said, we have a compass, not a map, but it's a good compass. We're following Jesus, and that in the end, we are going to end up where God wants us to be. And that's going to be the kingdom of God. And I'm going to hold on to that. I'm going to hold on to it real tight right now because everything else is getting kind of weird. I'm going to hold on to that, and I hope you can too. Amen. So, uh, I'm going to close out with a prayer. And uh, it, it, we can try, if you want to do things a little bit longer, we can do prayer and confession, and we, we can extend, but I'm... Today, we're end with a prayer. And, and please email me, prayers of the people, prayer, the joys and concern, concerns you want to share. Email or text me or whatever uh, comes up. So I'll invite you to pray with me now. Lord, in this time of uncertainty when there is so much that is changing, we thank you once more for being our certainty, the rock that we can hold on to. We pray that you'd help us to learn new ways during these days, new ways of keeping in touch with each other, new ways of worshiping you, new ways of using our time. We pray that you'd keep us flexible on what we need to be while standing firm on what matters most, that we will love you and we will love our neighbors. We pray for those neighbors, our neighbors who are sick, our neighbors that are serving, our neighbors that have, have to risk leaving their homes. We pray for our neighbors that are near. We pray for our neighbors who are far away. For our community, we pray for our neighbors that are our nation. We pray for our neighbors around the world. We pray for the leaders uh, that they might, in the face of such a challenge, in the face of such high stakes, we pray for them that uh, they might choose wisely for the good of our communities and might do so seeking the best advice and wisdom uh, of the scientists and, and the doctors who serve us. We pray for all these things in the name of your Son and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay. That's it. Uh, 24 minutes. Worship, uh, we'll call that good. Uh, I pray that the peace of Christ be with you this day and always. I am praying for you each and every day, and I look forward to the day that we can gather again.